third, 2023, uh, at 1.43 p.m., so that's today, um, earlier today, Palestinian farmer, and talking about atrocities, here we go. Palestinian farmer loses $10,000 after settlers set fire to his beehives. You know, I don't, beehives, what harm do they cause? 20 beehives, this is the picture, 20 beehives were set on fire and burnt by Israeli settlers in Zanuda, south of the southern West Bank city of Hebron. Israeli occupation forces today destroyed an up... <laughs> Israeli occupation forces today destroyed and uprooted dozens of olive trees in the town of Betir, west of occupied Bethlehem, Wafa News Agency reported. That just uh, sets me off right there. According to a local Palestinian activist, an Israeli army unit broke into the eastern part of the village during a morning raid and proceeded to raise four dunams, one acre of land, vandalizing dozens of olive trees owned by local resident Mazen Abu Nemi. He added that the area has been recently targeted by groups of extremist Israeli settlers who set up caravans as a prelude to setting up a new illegal outpost and preventing Palestinian residents from accessing their lands. Under international law, oh, and I should say this is from the Middle Eastern Monitor. Um, under international law, both the West Bank and East Jerusalem are occupied territories. All settlement building is, therefore, illegal. Meanwhile, this is what you were talking about, Joe. Meanwhile, in the village of Zanuda, south of the southern west bank of Hebron, 20 beehives were set on fire and burnt by Israeli settlers. Yosef al-Sharha, the owner of the beehives, told Wafa that the settlers who had destroyed his beehives had recently set up a caravan and established a settlement outpost next to his Apiary or apiary? I am not sure. Okay. I'm going to say apiary. Okay. Um, according to Manda Weiss, the settlers operate by descending en masse on different sites where they then set up tents and mobile caravans before declaring them new settlements. I mean, that's, that's, uh. there's a pattern, and oh. the pattern mm. is allowed to go on. But uh, just to set up a tent and a mobile caravan, that's yeah. enough. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, we, we all, many of us have laughed at times about, you know, we're going to take a flag up to the moon and we'll say, you know, this is my land. This is my land. And this is. Yeah, there is a pattern, D, and it's an awful one, and it goes unchecked. Mm. The settlers had burnt 20 out of 50 beehives he owns, which cost him a loss of more than $10,000. Settler violence against Palestinians and their property is routine in the occupied West Bank and is rarely sanctioned there you go, by the Israeli authorities. Over 700,000 Israelis live in Jewish-only settlements across the occupied West Bank and East Jerusalem in violation of international law. All of Israel's settlements 
and the settlers who live there are illegal under international law. And there you have it. Olive trees and beehives. Mm -hmm. I get... And look at the, I mean, those photos of things just totally, totally burnt. Charred, right. burnt, un, unusable. And for, well, That's only to... man's livelihood. This is his business. Totally yes. destroyed. Yes. And, and um, you know, and this isn't the, this isn't Gaza either. This is the West Bank. You know, we were talking about Gaza the other night. This is this is clearly occupied territories. It's it's vandalism. It's like gang. It's like you know, setting loose a gang and saying, "Do whatever, wreak whatever havoc you can, destroy whatever you can." And then when you've done that, take a couple of tents, you know, and some mobile caravans, and say, "This belongs to us now." Yes. How can it, it's clearly viol, a violation of international law, and yet there it is. It's a violation of international law, it's also stealing. Yeah, and, what and. Kind of they are, what kind of people do this to uh, other people? Um, ones filled with hate so strong that they can't see any Thing beyond the nose on their face and I you know I've read a lot of things about you know um, different j jihad groups and others um, just to try to or or there was a, a, a novel by Marge Piercy called Vida V-I-D-A was about the um, the weather underground people and so I try to get inside the heads of people, you know, and as an activist, you know, sometimes we get really, really frustrated so we can identify with frustration, not necessarily with, not with violence, but with frustration. And for the life of me, I cannot find inside my head or my heart or anywhere that kind of feeling so strong that you would be, you would feel empowered and entitled to destroy people's properties, to destroy people's livelihoods, to steal from them what is rightfully theirs. I can't, or or throw garbage on their heads in the old city of Hebron. Right, and you call them the terrorists. You call them terrorists. Isn't that crazy? I uh, yeah. You call them the terror, and you call them terrorists. Yeah, I mean it, it. It defies logic, um, but when you got when you've got power behind you, yeah, when you have power and, behind you, and you also have the religious belief behind you, mm -hmm. um, don't forget that mm -hmm. people who go to Palestine okay, and who settle there in areas where the settlement is legal. Um, beyond international law, uh, those are people who are imbued with the sense okay, of mission. It's a biblical sense, okay, of mission. In a certain sense, they are called, okay, to go there. But the irony of that, Joe, is if somebody in a in a, a theocracy and an Islamic state did even one-tenth of what these religious zealots, zealots are doing, the world would come down on their heads so fast. You know, yes. I mean, it, yes. that, that's the irony of it, the hypocrisy of it, the yes. un injustice of it. Um, yes. Yeah, because it is a religious fervor and it's a theocratic fervor. And, the you know, many countries won't stand for it from anybody else, they wouldn't stand for it. But from from the Jewish state, from the Israeli state. But from the Israeli settlers, they do stand for it. 
Okay, and that is, I mean, it's uh, just obviously wrong. Mm -hmm. And it, I think it's that kind of reasoning that Robert F. Kennedy should be faced with to see how he reacts to that. Because he's not thinking about it uh, from that standpoint. And the other thing is, and I, I don't know if that's, he's not thinking about it from that standpoint. I don't know if he has been approached on that standpoint, but I, I've said this before about, about olive trees. Olive trees are amongst the strongest trees in the world. They can live 2,000, 3,000 years. Why in the world? I mean, I still wouldn't support it. I wouldn't support it under any circumstance. But why do the settlers destroy the olive trees? They could... Anyway, it goes along with just the sort of scorched earth thought. You know, there's a lot been written about scorched earth theory, but yeah, it's like get that sense. They destroy the olive trees because they're the livelihood of the Palestinians. I, yeah, but they, they have no environmental awareness whatsoever on top of everything else. They're not from there. They don't know the region. Uh, yeah, uh, but but I think I think their religious fervor would carry them through even if somebody told them. I mean, what, why they don't know the region. If they knew the region, what might change, Dean? Like you're talking about the olive trees and just the earth mm. itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well. <laughs> and they're, they're, they can't, oh, this is going to sound corny. I'm sorry. They can't see the forest for the trees. <laughs> um, but they, but, um, and I wonder who, uh, oh, I assume that the Palestinian farmer, if he's going to replace those beehives, that will be at his expense, no? Oh, uh, yeah, that's what I assume. You won't be able to, to petition anybody for the money. Hmm? Uh, yeah, I don't think there's a legal way to make the settlers responsible um, in occupied Palestine. You know, there's mm -hmm. this occupied Palestine. You know, so how are you no. going to make settlers responsible? Yeah, and you can't, you know, nothing happens to settlers who shoot and kill um, Israel, uh, Palestinians. So if nothing happens to them, then what's going to happen to the happen? people? Um, um, but who kill their olive trees? Yeah, or yeah, their bees. I mean, their bees, yeah. really, and the olive olive trees and bees. I mean, and uh, I'm sorry, I'm speechless now. I have nothing more to say on this one. Oh, it's just but, uh, so horrific. It's just it just the cruelty. It's just. It's too much, and nothing gets done. Nothing. No, and there's nothing that's sacred, quote unquote, to the to the Israeli settlers. Nothing at all. Nothing of the Palestinians that's sacred. To think that's uh, superior. Uh, just a point: Are the settlers Israeli settlers, or are they predominantly American settlers? who have gone to Israel. They're all Jewish. Huh? Most of them are... American and British. Hmm. Australian, too. I, I, was, I heard about an Australian man that was talking about, about what he's doing. Horrible person. So, I mean, they just... Australia, Britain, the USA. No, so the settlers are from all over. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and that's the other part that, that, is, that has haunted me 
is that and all of set you were the ones who said it and got me thought got me started thinking about it is the historic connection to the land is lacking in a lot of these folks the historic connect not just as you said do they don't know the territory they don't know the region they have no historic connection to it either and um and that's yeah, i think in many cases they've not even been farmers before hmm. Hmm. And you know, I mean, I saw about some people that left the region too. They talked about why are so many Israelis leaving? <laughs> you, know, you have people coming in, people coming out, and some of the and, and a lot going to Europe now, going back to Europe, is because it's the um, the violence, you know, and the bombings and this and that, and just having to live in that type of an environment. Um, you know, it was. It was really intense the way some of the people were talking, and it wasn't what they expected, you know, with all of that. So I'm just thinking, you know, you could leave so easily. It just shows there's no connection. That things mm -hmm. aren't right for you, you could leave. It mm -hmm. doesn't have that same connection that the Palestinians have to the land. Mm. Once again... Once again, we've uncovered some really, really difficult topics, difficult actions, you know, actions difficult to it accept. Now, every day, is, you know, like you see, because some of the stuff, you know, we don't bring on to the show because there's just so many things going on. But every day, we have it inside the group there, the private, you know, the chat. Mm -hmm. um, every day, we see stuff happening over in Palestine every day the settlers or it's the you know the government itself IDF it's always attacking the Palestinians every day there's loss of life there's loss of property every single day yeah well, 